Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another strategy game video with The Terminator. When it comes to grand strategy gaming, the two companies that always pop up the most are Creative Assembly with their Total War games and Paradox with Crusader Kings, Europa Universalis, Imperator Rome and others. CA's Total War has always involved a relatively fast-paced campaign that rewards you for military expansion, technological development, coupled with some limited economic and political systems that all mesh together to create a pretty fun experience. The unique selling point though here is the real-time large-scale battles that brings your factions to life and, depending on the outcome, have a large impact on your campaigns. Paradox games, on the other hand, have always been about deep and varied grand strategy, maximizing the replayability of the hundreds of different factions with intricate economic, political, dynastic, diplomatic, and other such campaign mechanics. There are no real-time battles like in Total War, but the faction management and development side of things is a lot more detailed and strategic. Both companies Companies have a very different approach to grand strategy that have their pros and of course their cons. And in today's video, I'm going to do my best to compare these two types of games and offer you my analysis over whether one is actually better than the other. By the end, you should have a pretty clear idea on what these games are all about, which one you might prefer, and how they hold up against each other to come out on top in grand strategy gaming. So let's get started. In the vast PC gaming industry, very few games capture the essence of what it means to create, grow, and manage an empire on a grand scale and with depth and replayability. Paradox games from sci-fi to the world wars to the medieval are all about capturing this essence exactly, making you feel like you are truly in control, truly managing a living, breathing dynasty full of kings, emperors, generals, assassins, you name it. These games offer the player to take a a historical nation and turn it into a Mediterranean economic powerhouse or a super AI machine race to pillage across a galaxy. More than anything though, Paradox games are about power. They're about your faction dominating the internal political system with coercion, seduction, or more legitimate means, dominating the diplomatic system with vassalization, marriages, and military expansion, and achieving technological superiority, religious zeal, and renown, all of which to the most minor decision can have a large impact elsewhere in the world. No playthrough is ever the same as the AI behaves in different ways, and no family ever stays pure or indeed stays in power for very long. So the biggest pro for me with Paradox Games is essentially the massive depth and variation in campaign gameplay. In CK3, the latest title in the Crusader King series, you can take a Viking kingdom and raid the British Isles. You can take the Byzantine Empire and try to reestablish old Roman glory. Or you could take the Pope himself and manage the Christian world, ordering crusades and excommunicating rogue states. The main point here is Paradox Games are a lot more about strategic campaign gameplay rather than the tactical gameplay you get in Total War, where your order of technological research, your investment in specific types of buildings, or how many kids you have, or which vassal you end up pissing off, makes a massive difference to your progression. It's not so much how you maneuver armies on the map to expand as quickly and successfully as possible, as it is to strategically prioritize developing your faction to get long-term gains. In this way, pretty much every aspect of campaigning in Paradox Games is far superior to the kind of experience you get in Total War. Diplomacy is a lot more intuitive and impactful, technology is a lot more varied and rewarding, internal political systems are a huge part of the game that you always have to pay attention to, and economic systems are truly the backbone of your military, so you always have to keep investing and keep developing. There is real, true depth here that almost every Total War lacks. And for the most part, it puts the Paradox Games ahead of Total War by a wide margin. Now, all of that being said, the lack of depth and meaning in Total War campaigns is pretty much made up for by the brilliantly unique Total War battles. No other strategy game out there balances simple yet satisfying grand strategy military expansion with tactical and visually stunning large-scale battles. While you may not need to deal with family and dynastic struggles or legitimate claims to wage war or any of the detailed grand strategy mechanics you get in Paradox games, you do have to deal with 
with enemy AI armies, winning decisive battles that can impact the outcome of your wars, and actually playing these battles out personally as well. Don't get me wrong, there are Total War games in which the campaign mechanics are a lot more detailed and engaging. Total War Saga Troy, for example, has a resource system that actually works really well and forces the player to think strategically about economic development in tandem with military prioritization and indeed diplomatic relationships. Total War Attila is another great example, especially if the player takes a campaign as Rome. It's all about survival against the onslaught of the Gothic invasions and of course Attila himself, forcing the player to think about defendable terrain, prioritize certain cities over others for development, and surviving rather than expanding. The most unique part of Total War campaigning are the battles. These games are all about managing military expansion, being tactical about army development and placement, prioritizing specific techs to cater to specific playstyles and unit rosters to achieve the ultimate victory of defeating all your enemies, achieving all the campaign goals, and if you play for long enough, conquering the entire world. Battles are the biggest aspect of this as you need to anticipate where your enemy armies will be, what their military strengths and weaknesses are and where and how to defeat them in battle. What I'm trying to drive home here in this part of the video is that many assume Total War Grand Strategy is actually weak compared to Paradox, but in reality, the battles you fight, the tech you develop to give you an edge, the economy you nurture to support your expansion, and the various other campaign mechanics as well all lend themselves to brilliant tactical strategy. Almost every battle has a direct consequence to campaign progression which essentially means that battles are a major part of the grand strategy experience of Total War. If you lose a defensive siege of a key economic city, you may not be able to support your armies and they will start taking attrition. If you manage to ambush an invading army and crush them in battle, you may be able to make peace for favorable concessions. And if you win a certain war, wiping out a faction, another faction may become friendly to you and offer an alliance. The main point here is that what makes Total War so impressive in the grand strategy, just as impressive, I think, as Paradox Games, is battle. Battles are just as essential to the grand strategy of the campaign as other mechanics, and more than anything, that's what makes Total War so unique in the genre. So with both Paradox and Total War games explored, which do I recommend you check out? Which type of grand strategy is better? The answer is simple. If you enjoy deep grand strategy, proper detailed strategy where military expansion isn't the only way to develop and progress in the world, then Paradox Games is likely for you. But if you enjoy a limited amount of that with some breathtaking real-time battles that do make a difference to campaign gameplay, then the answer is Total War. Both offer a different and unique approach to grand strategy gaming that is fun and engaging and at times challenging. Both have their pros and cons, but what really matters at the end of the day is they both offer potentially thousands of hours of fun and memorable grand strategy gaming. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, do give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts about grand strategy in general, but also specifically whether you think Total War or Paradox games are better. I have laid out my thoughts in this video, giving you my honest assessment of both types of games and how they compare to each other, but I would love to hear what you think as well. Don't forget to subscribe for more grand strategy content, gameplay, and news, and thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.